Now that we're finished adding on both eyes, we're going to roll out some coils, and those are going to be made into the legs. Now we're going to take any lump of clay, doesn't have to be too big, and we're going to roll it out into a coil. That's going to be shaped like a worm or a long cylinder. I like to start by rolling between the palms of my hands and then laying the piece on the clay canvas square, the mat that I work on top of, and rolling back and forth with long strokes. Notice that I'm using my full hand as I'm rolling these out. With coils, we want our pieces to be as consistently thick as possible, so we want to try to make them the same thickness all the way along the coil. Now, some people like to use coil building to do the whole structure. They find that to be an enjoyable way, and it was also one of the oldest ways that people used ceramic as a watertight material. So people have been using clay for this sort of purpose for a long time. Now, if you stack your coils to make your whole form, you can have them get progressively bigger or smaller as they stack on top of each other, or you can keep them just the same size. If they get bigger, of course, your vessel will get wider as it heads up. If the coils get shorter, then they will get slightly narrower as it goes along. And coils that are the same length will make a same size or cylindrical piece. Whenever you attach coils, you always have to scratch and attach both pieces. Now, we're not really doing a coil building. We're going to use the coils as structural elements, but it's important to know how to use coil building. So that's what I wanted to demonstrate. Now we're going to use these two coils that we've already rolled out, and we're going to cut them so that we have two longer sides and two shorter sides, and we want both set of pieces the same length or so. We're going to make a pair of front legs and a pair of back legs. For the front legs, we're going to put a, we're going to take one of our shorter pieces, we're going to put about a right angle or even a little bit more than a right angle into that piece of a bend. We're going to scratch and attach one of the ends and we're going to score and slip and put that on to the underbelly of our frog right over by the corner of the mouth. This is going to be one of the four legs, so it's going to be shorter, or the front legs. So these are the shorter pair. Notice that I'm blending in along the side, but I'm trying to leave some of that coil a little extra, a little bigger, what we might call proud, meaning larger than the thing it's attached to. I'm going to try to make a similar size and shape piece for the other front leg. Notice that I flatten out one end, the end is going to be the toes. Later on, if I wanted to, I could carve some extra detail, I could use a knife to even separate the toes individually, but having a coil that's been flattened and formed a little bit is a fine start for this process. Once I feel satisfied with my front legs, I'm going to do the same thing. Here I am in the video, scratching where the back legs are going to be. It's going to be on the back side of the torso, sort of right behind or a little ways behind the eyes. We're going to use our longer pieces. We're going to put a sharp curve, more than 90 degree angles, and we're going to put that about one third of the way along the length of the coil. The short side will get attached onto our frog's belly. The long side will be the long leg of the frog. Now, if you were making this for a permanent and a keepsake, something you wanted to make as your final project, you might want to look at pictures and make the legs a little bit more naturally shaped. But for this, we're flattening out the toes. We're having extra on the foot. The longer of the two sides is going to be flat against the ground. And then we scratch and attach them. Now this is really just about the last step in this process. At least as far as showing our basic skills. Now if you want to make this into a functional object, you can, I'll show that in a moment, but we can put our little hat on, take a look at our frog, looks pretty cute, looks pretty weird, but pretty cute. I'm feeling pretty satisfied. 
Now we don't want to leave the hat on top of the frog. We're just testing for fit and shape. And it seems good to me. So I'm pretty happy. If we leave the hat on top of the frog, when we come back next class, it's going to be destroyed, though. Because clay does not do well with weight on it as it dries. If I wanted to make it into a functional object, I could cut a hole behind the eyes, a slot that my phone, my cell phone, could go into. Once this is all cooked up and fired, it can act as an amplifier or a speaker. So if you're playing music from your phone or a phone call or whatever, you, you can have the phone mounted in the frog with the speaker inside the frog's belly, and it will actually amplify the sound, make it a little bit louder and fuller. The bigger the cavity of the frog, the more it would have this effect. Now, right here, I'm going to cut out the inside of the stovepipe of the hat. I'm just trying to reduce a little weight, get rid of some extra, and make double sure that I didn't seal an air pocket in. So I traced out where I would have that slot for a phone on the back. You can put yours in if you want to. You certainly don't have to. But now we're pretty much done, so thanks for watching. Great work.